Hello, and welcome to the Pain Points of Interest podcast. We want to tell the stories of people, their businesses, and the journey that they are on. Our purpose here is to gather a new perspective on starting, growing, maturing, and maintaining businesses of all sizes. So grab that cup of coffee, sit back, and join us as we start this discussion. Hey guys, okay, we have another episode. I'm your host, Sarah Harbuck, and with us today is Kristen Ellis, back from maternity leave. Hey, hey. Kristen. Uh, our guest today is Caro Garcia of Appia Art. Hello, Caro, how are you? Hello, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome, and you're calling from South Florida, correct? Yes, I'm oh. down in Miami. <laughs> down. It is, is it hot right. there? Didn't you all just have like a tropical storm come through, or...? I don't know. No? Okay. <laughs> I, look, I, I look outside and it looks fine. We have we have rain so often and it's so much that I just lose count. I, I don't you see just, it as tropical storm. It's just raining. I think it's just regular weather for you guys anymore. at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just like, it's all usually very hot. I remember when I moved here, I was like, how could I move to a place that does not have any oxygen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You breathe you know, your water just... to stay hydrated. Hey, that's East Texas. Yeah. So, you know, right? we're in we, the same boat. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you... get used to it. So. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little about yourself? You're in South Florida. You're in Miami. But what else are... What else other little tidbits should we know? Um, well, I'm an artist. And I was formerly an engineer, which oh. I dedicated myself to it for 15 years. I stopped working as such because of my son. Uh, he has a disability, so I decided when he was four to care fully full time for him. And uh, along the way, I discovered that he was nonverbal. So along the way, I discovered that I was able to communicate with him through art, oh, uh, wow. drawings, That's and, awesome. drawings, and paintings. And uh, I have always loved art, or I, I see it as the language. So Whenever I wanted to check on myself, I would draw something and look at it to see, oh, yeah, I'm still happy, even though the sky was falling, you know. So, <laughs> so it's, 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 like, um, it's like a language to me. And I have always used it. I, I just, when I finished high school, I was just way too afraid to become an artist. Uh, it was much safer to be an engineer. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know? Right, sure. right. So, totally. You know, and, and, and I was able to do so. So, I, okay, let's go and do that. And I had fun. I loved it. Uh, but when I started uh, communicating with my son this way and and reassured that art was really a language, mm -hmm. I just could not stop the connection. And I just, um, the beginning, beginning, I didn't do it professionally. It was just something I did with my son to develop him further. And uh, it became so important in my life that it was kind of like a natural change for me to become an artist. A professional artist and um, that's how everything started actually so had you had like any background in art had you taken art classes in school or was this just something you sat down one day just always enjoyed or always had a talent for yeah I I I don't well yeah I, I was talented <laughs> I was talented my uh, my art teacher in high school actually didn't give me any assignments she wanted me to be free and create so we could participate in contests okay. everybody wow. thought Everybody thought I was going to become an artist. I did the the school uh, school murals. I did oh, wow. I my first painting is an oil painting from when I was three and looks like it was done by a older child, still a child but older <laughs> child. Um, so I was. So it's just very always artistic. been always been a yeah. part of your life. Yeah, yeah. It's very important. I I think I I was an artist. I just was afraid to become one. You know. Right. I was very independent. I, when I graduated, I, I was very pragmatic too. I graduated at 16. Oh, wow. And um, for that, I was just like on task. Like, you know, it's just like, I'm going to th there. I want to achieve all these things. I go, so art was some, something that was not as structured as I liked, <laughs> you know, right, for my right, life. Right. Um, so I guess that's, that's the main reason why I didn't pursue it. 
Um, I think too, a lot of people have that fear that, you know, well, how can I make a living doing art? Right. You know, yes. uh, an engineering yeah. degree, you can definitively make a living doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. you, you know, very much, much more stable. Out of that. Yeah. It's definitely, I think, a, a fear thing, you know, I, I think, yes. and not, not that's not a criticism. I definitely have talked to several people over the years, many, many people, you know, where they, they pursued a, reg, you know, a business degree or a business career or something that was, you know, more stable versus the arts because yeah. you know it's a little right. harder to know if you can make a living doing that um absolutely so you started this with your son and that's kind of what kind of was the jumping point for you mm-hmm. uh I'm sure early on it was really just a way to communicate with your child and that's amazing I think that you know that the fact that you saw that as a connection and a thing that would happen and then use that um, but what what really got you to the point where you thought I could make a business out of this? Uh, people started taking an interest of what I was doing. Like um, I remember there was this uh, a person that is she's not really close to me, but she's the niece of a cousin of mine. Okay. And but much younger generation, she said you should share what you do on Instagram. Oh, okay. And, okay. And till that point, I was like, what is Instagram? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not in the age group, you know. So. Right. No, that was me six months ago. We're, we're a little older, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm 40-something, so it was not something, like, I would do, you know? I love how she did that. Like... I'm 40-something. <laughs> <laughs> a lady and, uh, never tells. Yeah. So, it's, uh... so, so your, she, your friend yeah. encouraged you to be on Instagram. It. Gotcha. And it, it, it took me some time to actually do it. I was like, I felt very kind of, I don't know, ridiculous could be the way the, the word. It was like, sure. No, right. nobody, yeah. I, nobody I knew was doing Instagram. Like, yeah. none of my peers, none of my friends uh, were doing Instagram. So I felt like, okay, I'm invading a child. Right. Kind of kind sticking here. your toes in where you don't belong kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I have always loved technology. So it, it was not that hard for me to um, start it. And, and early on, I decided uh, I'm, I'm good at painting horses, and I know people like horses. So yeah. I said, okay, I should start my account by painting horses daily. And that's what I did at the beginning. Okay. So, and and, and that caught, so it's more of um, others telling me, you know, this could be a business than me saying it firsthand. So um, it was it was yeah. other people in your life going, hey, you should, you know, you should turn this into a thing you make money off of. Rather than you going, exactly. I should make money off of this. <laughs> yeah. I was just okay. doing it, you know. Yeah. It, it was something that was helping me because when I left work, the regular office and all that. Right. The um, structure. I felt very, yeah, I felt very lost. It was not an easy yeah. transition for me. No. I decided to care for my son and I had no idea how to care for a child with autism. And he not only has autism, he has other conditions. So I needed, um, I needed to study to be able to fully uh, care for him. I needed right. to study. Yeah. So I was more focused on that. I was taking ABA classes. Uh, for, so I became his, his therapist. Um, okay. And uh, oh. I was able to, to really have a connection with him because up until this point, um, I didn't. And mm-hmm. it's really sad, but that was the truth. I was working and then there right. was the therapist and he was doing his things, but he was four, still nonverbal. Um took him three years to start walking um it was all through therapy eating was through therapy everything was through therapy so i was not really caring about making money out of this it was just really i was so hyper focused on him yeah right it was born out of a place of taking care of your child and trying to communicate with with someone who's not communicating in a more traditional way and i imagine that 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 must have felt very rewarding on your part as yeah, a mother to yeah. be able to communicate with your child to who, make that breakthrough yeah be able to you know figure that out so you've made this um, connection with your child with through art and it wasn't really in your mind to create a business with it um but over time as you you know were were communicating with your son and and making all these projects um, did someone come to you and go, I want you to paint this picture for me? Did it start out as commissions or did you just have a collection of the art that you made with your son and that's sort of what was the stock you used to kind of um, create your business from there? Where was the starting point for you? Um, at the starting point, I was actually uh, giving art away. 
Oh. Uh, my son, yeah, my son attended a, a school for autism, and they were uh, having this um, themes for spring and themes for those things. And I love installation and art through installation, so I offered uh, to do those. Um, and in that way, I would call attention from others too, you know. Yeah. So I, I did several of those, and um, through through the different entities that where he participates, I, I started giving. Uh, away things, you know, like um, classes, teaching, uh, doing those things for free. So uh, I would create like a community because what I didn't have was a foot in. I didn't know anybody in the business. I didn't know much people. Um, it was, um, I I needed, first of all, I needed the connection. So Instagram gotcha. helped me connecting with other artists and, and some people were interested in what I was posting. So at the beginning was more than commission was what I was posting, but the first in was giving away um, art. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot of people, especially artists, tend to start like that. You know, it's it's a very slow and unless, it, you know, you, you explode somehow in the art scene, you right. know, and something goes viral, then, then you know, I, I feel like from everybody I've ever talked to in the art world, it's a very slow. More organic type process. Yeah, just, uphill yeah. climb in a way that you, because those, making those connections is very important, really in any business, but especially with artists, I feel like that's yeah. how you get right. your in. Um, and that was reading um, how to get, you know, into the art world. Like, okay, I need to get into, I need to know people, I need to know galleries and and it was usually directed to um, former students in the arts, and I didn't have that. So I didn't have a network of, you know, students that I met while I was studying art. So I had to get an in it, and I started visiting fairs too. That was very important. Um, I started visiting fairs and collecting uh, cars, business cards of galleries, and contacting the galleries and making friends with other artists through Instagram or, um, or through the events and uh, Basel and Miami uh, Week Art Week. Um, which I met a few and they have helped me too. They have introduced me to, to people in the business and and through them I have gotten some interviews. They all have all been written. This is the first time that I do something talking directly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because you had sent me you had sent me an article and I had read it uh, uh, about a week ago and I was like, oh wow, she's gonna be so interesting to talk to. Um, oh. So I'm I'm really happy that you decided to come on and and, and talk to us in a in a audio recording uh in the same sort of format but um so yeah uh so you're you're connecting with these other artists and getting in with galleries uh was one of the first steps like creating a website for you or was it really focusing posting your work on something like what instagram was, was basically uh through instagram driven instagram. Um, I just yeah i just generated my website this year i have i have i didn't do it before i kind of have lost faith in Websites, I go yeah. visiting websites. I thought, um, but then now I, I'm interested in creating a 3D gallery. Yes, I'm work, I'm actually working actively on that. I, I wanted to have it ready for today, so you would, uh, you know, so we, I could share it today. But um, unfortunately, I didn't. It, it is a lot of work. Uh, yes, and I want to create the spaces. <laughs> yeah, I want to create the spaces for the th the series I'm working uh, currently, and uh, for people to visualize um, the whole thing because it's as a uh, it's a process, and it, it, I know I'm, I'm going to say it, and it, it comes from very, you know, uh, close to me. But I, I love, I love, I love what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Because um, it has a lot of meaning in my life. So the sharing that, I wanted to share it. Like the the Instagram became something too restrictive. So at the beginning, I was fine with it, but now I want something uh, that is better for me. And uh, that's why I want to go into the 3D galleries online because, you know, contactless things are now a thing. Right, um, right. And, and also, you know, too, so you know, when you're not able to have shows or in-person shows, I, I'm yeah. guessing that this is a good format for people like yourself who can do everything online yeah. now. And since your child is immunocompromised and you can't really be around a lot of people, this is definitely, I'm sure, an aid to help continue to promote your business yes. while things are so crazy this, this yeah this this year i have been basically focused on um on um online exhibits so i have had back-to-back -back online exhibits uh with different uh galleries and uh that's been my main focus for the year because all the gatherings got canceled and i was right. hoping that 
Miami Art Week by the end of the year was going to go through because I was already booked for context, which is a very important fair. But the gallery that takes me there is from Argentina. And they said, um, if, even if context goes through, Basel canceled and it's too much of an investment for us to go and have this if, even if they don't even if even if context doesn't so it's kind of like a dead week already they have not uh, said anything you know well, that they already canceled but Basel canceled it means most of all the others will follow and that was so sad and so shocking it was just like okay this is the one thing I'm going to do live and present and I, I can't uh, yeah, this has been a struggle for a lot of people. Yeah. Musicians, artists have, I think, taken a, a big pretty hit. bad hit yeah. this year because of no shows, no no concerts, no right. in-person anything. And, I, you know, yeah. my heart goes out to all those people because they're, they're running these small businesses. You don't think about artists and musicians being small businesses, but they are. They're yeah. a but brand they are. in yes. and of yeah, themselves. They very much are. And I wanted to talk to you, and we're probably going to try to get a musician on to kind of talk about this struggle of what it's been like for how you have to adapt and you know do this online yeah. 3d gallery right. or you do these online showings um have you I've noticed had, an increase my... or a decrease in interest like has it been a good thing for you in the in the long run or has it still been kind of a challenge um it's it's been a challenge uh, i had my whole year planned i had fairs uh, international fairs back to back this year and i had like the whole schedule of traveling already set uh, mm -hmm. so to me it was a very much of a hard hit when I said when everybody everything started canceling yeah and I I I had to open up to this online galleries and online shows and applying right. to those that I was not formally applying to and discover a whole other world of things that were happening online too yeah thank goodness for that so You've got it, have it, is, it is a yeah it is a challenge but we are in a in an era that we're very, very um, developed um, in, in terms of being able to satisfy that loss with something else. Yes. So internet and the communications and videos and other things yeah. became highly important. And you need to be able to adapt no matter what business you are into. Yes. Um, so very, art very is true. one thing and, and yeah, you have to. It's a, uh, I hope another pandemic does not hit us. <laughs> but, <you> know, some, <laughs> oh goodness. Some, some, <laughs> Some things happen all the time. Yeah. Like I, it's the same with my child. I was I was pregnant. I work until Friday. I had him Sunday. I, I had a perfect pregnancy, and um, I never thought that my life would have would change as much. I thought, yeah, I'm gonna go back to work and everything will be just the same. I'll just need extra support and that that will be it. And my life took a big turn back then. So in a way, I I. I I kind of, well, I mutated because I was a person that thought a lot about the future and it doesn't matter. I, I still plan things ahead of time, but I do not live in the future as I used to. I yes, live in the yeah. present. So things that are changing, I need to change. It's, Be, just, yeah. it, it's, it's an immediate, it's a relationship you know being adaptable i'm sure yes. is, is is probably your number one asset at this point in your life where you have a child with special needs and you know yeah. having to adapt all those different things to fit the current lifestyle that you now have to live um it does take some letting go of how we used to be and <laughs> and and looking towards you know uh, yeah. a, a different perspective of it per, per se because i'm like you I, I was very much of a planner got to look to the right. future and these last couple of years have taught me that's just not really <laughs> gonna work out for you <laughs> uh sarah you or gotta figure it out better yeah yeah it's the best way to and do especially it. Yeah. since march i think it's been everybody's kind of like well you can't really plan too far in the future because who knows what's gonna happen right. yeah. um it's been I, a crazy crazy pivot for a lot of people and i'm yeah. glad to see that you know most people are adapting fairly well um and yeah. in trying to do what's necessary to continue continue on We're all learning new skills and new yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> ways of yeah. coping and handling things and and yeah thank thank god for technology and the avenues that it provides well let's talk a yes. little let's talk a little bit about your um your art uh, how do you as an artist when you sit down to create something what take us through that process okay um it i start always start with a question um usually it's about my state of mind and my 
I'm not happy. Um, am I too stressed or yeah. it, some something of the sort? Because what I, are you I, feeling in that moment, basically? Right. Yeah, and because it's it's really easy for for humans to de- deceive ourselves with words. So we can we can yes. actually convince ourselves that we are depressed when we are not, when, and yeah. when or that we are happy when we are actually not. So we're not really processing our emotions the right way, sure, and yeah. um, that's not healthy either way. Yes. Um, to to hide from those. So my work has to do a lot with that, and um, because I live this life where. Well, my, my son has, um, um, with all of his things, he, he, he was not supposed to be a, alive past five and then wow. alive past a certain age. And, and then I almost lost my husband and, and because he had a heart attack while, while playing tennis. Oh, my goodness. And it's, it's just I have had this this big things and I have changed so much. And then I, I gave up the career that I actually paid for my study. So right. <laughs> it, I have had to give up a lot. So I need to check on how I am because my life changed so much that sometimes I go back to, okay, what if nothing of this had happened, where would I be? And right. and I need to check on that. So my process has to do a lot with my life, my estate, and, and then the, the the last two series that I've been working on is, one is called Finding Light. Um, and it's a search of, okay, if, in, if I'm in a bad state of mind, then I need to find the place where I can uh, find solace and refuge and then blossom from there. So it's yeah. finding that light. And then I have this sub series called um, harvesting light because now I feel that I'm on the other end. I already have it. I'm, I need collecting and now I'm pampering myself. So I'm on the yeah. harvesting part. And yeah. that that is why I make it uh, so important to me to work on it because it helps helps me know where I am at in life. Right. Well, and you and have to also, take care of yourself because you have these people, you know, like your son, that depend on you. And in order for you to be the best you can be for him, yes, you have to take care of you. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a very important thing. A lot of times we forget about, you know, we get so busy oh, and caught up. Oh, most of the time. Yeah, we get so busy and caught up and I got to get this done and I got to do this and I got, you know, and, and then we forget that, that, you know, we're important too. Well, it sounds, it sounds a little bit like therapy in a way. It's, yeah, a, it's a way yeah. for you to sort of, you know, you seem like a very self-aware individual and ahead of the game in a lot of ways. And so sitting down and doing your art and asking yourself the question of, how am I feeling today? What am I thinking? What am I doing? What's what's my what what's my overall like emotional health mm-hmm. going on here? And and then using that to fuel your art, I think is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should all probably be doing that to some degree. Um, yes. So you have these different series that you are working on that kind of, you know, um, reinforce that idea. Um, you also not only paint and what have you, watercolor and all that, um, you teach as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Because I'm, I'm imagining that's a big part of of your job as well as teaching yeah i enjoy teaching i i i, I don't know how to describe it mm. i love teaching Aww. and i try to do it with my life to take jobs that do not feel like jobs that feels more like a pastime or a hobby um engineering may not sound like that but when i was working i could work all the hours in the world without caring because I knew that if somebody said, I'm not, I'm not gonna pay you, and everything was taken care of, of course, you know, like I had yeah. everything, uh, I would keep on working as much. Um, and and with teaching is, is something like that. It gives me so much um, to see my students develop. I, it, it gives me so much joy, and, and I guess it gives me more than what I give them, even though I try to be the best teacher I can be, but it is such a great, a great thing for me. Um, to do it that I cannot see myself without it. And um, I try to go by process and I try to teach other things like um, for them to be comfortable with what they're doing, um, to learn to appreciate, to step back and and take the time to see the thing, not just the minute that they're painting it because you never see things in the right light when you're just just did them. Um, And I try to take the time to to teach those things too and and, um, I have a group of students that are amazing. And how did that, how did the teachings come about? Did you, was it, you know, people just asking about it or, or 
you know, is I this did, through another I, institution? How did this it, it, get started? Yeah, I teach through another institution. Um, okay. That, um, so it's, um, they, they, they set up the time for me and, and find the students for me, and I do it online. So I, I use two cameras, one pointing directly to the painting so they can see exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Another one where I get to see them and they get to see my face. So it feels very much like we're together. More personal. Yeah. 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 Okay. And cool. I encourage, I, I'm one of those weird teachers that actually encourage interruptions. I want, <laughs> <laughs> I want people to talk on top and telling me things and show me things. Um, so it, it feels very organic. I, I just love it. And I have developed some uh, other classes for parents of kids with disabilities. Oh. Um, one is, yeah, one is called Patients Through Origami uh, oh, okay. that I teach um, twice a year at a center. And the other one is the, the, power, the power of Words, uh, the what, what we tell. And uh, it's um, about, you know, uh, lettering. So it's the writing a message for yourself. So okay. those classes are very rewarding too because giving tools, tools that I have acquired with time, and um, origami is one of my biggest passions too. So, uh, and I use it for patients because I was not built with patients from factory. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think we could all use a little lesson yeah. in patients from time to time. <laughs> um, wow, so that's really cool. The so the did the art come first and then the teaching come after, or was it uh, kind of uh, the other way uh, around? Art, no, art, uh, uh, well, I, I, I was a TA when I was studying engineering too for other subjects, but so I have always enjoyed teaching. Gotcha, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, but, but it was uh, the institution that approached me because they have found me and uh, they oh, said, very okay, cool. do you want to come and teach? Yeah. 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 yeah, and, and uh, what do you we, teach we specifically? Love, we, do you teach like um, a specific style of art, uh, a specific uh, yeah, medium? Um, it's uh, closer to realism, which is not what I do professionally, but right. it's watercolor. Yeah, yeah. watercolor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, Na nature, nature inspired watercolor. So it's it's mainly landscapes and yeah. and and all, all those things nature. I think Sarah, that's what... Sarah actually does some really I, pretty, I, yeah. really pretty watercolor stuff. Well, she... you know, <laughs> hey, it was just a yeah. hobby. I I took classes in in school and really liked it as a fun thing to do. I was never really good at drawing. But mm -hmm. uh, watercolor, that section of art class, really spoke to me for for whatever reason. And uh, you know, I've talked to other artists, and they're like, "Oh, watercolor is one of the hardest mediums you can work with." And I'm kind of like, "That's I, what I was going to say." <laughs> I, I like it because it's just like, well, it's going to do it's what it's going to do, so you know. And and, and I'm kind of yeah. like, I, it happened on accident. Wow, look at what I did. What an accident there. But it looks great, <laughs> you know. Um, sometimes it wasn't intentional, you know. And where, where the other mediums like acrylics or oils or things like that or pastels, I just didn't, I don't know. It just didn't feel like I could ever get that. It just didn't seem, that's... it felt foreign in my hand. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense at all. So watercolor was what I tended to identify with when I did artwork of any kind. Absolutely. But that happens to many artists. We all feel comfortable or more attuned with one medium. Mm -hmm. So you could, you can be the watercolor artist. You don't need to be right. an oil yeah. and acrylic and, you know, all yeah. the other mediums artists. you you right. can choose that and be that, and and if that uh, gives you joy, uh, that is something that you should. Be I mean, doing, maybe maybe know? it's because I was born in July and I'm a Cancer and a water sign, and it's like watercolor <laughs> just made sense for me. I don't know, but for whatever reason, I love it. And so anytime I would come across a watercolor artist on Instagram, and that's how you and I connected years yeah. ago. Uh, I think uh, I saw your art, or you saw mine, or something. And I, it's been so many years now, I don't even remember. But um, yeah, and so I would always be like, oh, that looks so pretty and cool, and I could I'd follow people just because their stuff yeah. was insp inspiring. And so that's that's how we connect it actually yeah, um yeah. that's the story there it's, uh it's, it's, it's i've actually since you posted some watercolor so i'm gonna be expecting to see some soon right yeah. <laughs> i'll have to pull some from my old account over yeah um yeah i've actually connected with a lot of artists and photographers on instagram um people i have no i don't know them personally they live all over the world and i've really enjoyed talking with them because they have so many different perspectives from me and they all have different you know specialties and interests and so I always like this world because you just meet so many different yeah. interesting people who have yes. these really great stories to tell. And, you know, everybody does it a little bit differently. And so you can always learn something new and different. I'm going to sneeze. Yeah. Um, and new and different from always, other people. Yeah, always be able to look at things from a different perspective. 
it's it's incredibly uh, what how much my my perspective of internet changed through Instagram. Because before I was raised in the time that you would be afraid of meeting strangers online. Right. No, <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, you're so, very right. And, and now, like, you talk to other people and you meet them, but you feel that you're talking to a real person because you can see their faces and you can, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's different than before, I guess. I don't before know. Before it was but just a box a, on the screen with letters on yeah. it. There was no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the AOL thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Chat rooms. Yeah. And now you're yeah. teaching classes online to people all over. That, I mean, that's that's yeah. that's the that's the progression we've yeah. come from in 25 years and, and i've connected with the most amazing and talented people too and and people that sells their their paintings for thirty thousand oh. dollars each you know it's wow. like, and they are very supportive too and and i'm very impressed by their humbleness you yeah. know yeah um yes. so it's I, it's incredible that that happens too there's there's cocky artists that have not done much and then there's amazing artists that will give you everything yeah it's um mm -hmm. you know it's uh, it's uh, i have met the most wonderful people through instagram i'm very very grateful for instagram yeah yeah um, i mean it's it, definitely been a especially now in the time of covid uh i think been mm -hmm. a way for people to connect because i tend to not get on facebook as much anymore just because of mm -hmm. all the crazy that can be on there and yeah. misinformation and drama that i just i really don't need that in my everyday life <laughs> enough but of that. instagram oh is pretty God. pictures that you can look at and yeah. you don't have to read the content you know the ca caption if you don't want to you can just look at the picture and be like that's beautiful like yeah yeah <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe i'm oversimplifying it but i i've been on instagram <laughs> since 2012 when they made it for Android phones because I have an Android I don't have an iPhone and so I've been on it for a while and I I have I've loved seeing how that particular medium has connected people differently than some of the other social media platforms because it's a much nicer yes. community chill. yeah a much more chill community and there's not as a, I actually yeah. recently recently deleted my Facebook account altogether because I was like yeah I don't need this anymore I'm done <laughs> I'm done with this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I, um, a very good friend of mine. She has um, a hard history channel. It's in Spanish. Uh, she's called La Gata Verde, which is uh, fairly well recognized um, among Spanish speakers. And she tells me about all the trolls and all the bad comments that she gets, and uh -huh. she puts, puts yeah. her life into those videos and researching and doing her work. So, but I I have never seen a bad comment on my page ever. Yeah. 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 Ever. Yeah. So it's um I, I think maybe in the eight years I've been on, I've had one or two people that have been and they were like spam accounts that they had l literally just been created and they didn't have any pictures. They didn't have a profile mm -hmm. and they were just there to, you know, make nasty comments. Yeah. But like in eight years, maybe a handful like and, yeah. and, and it was always from accounts like that. So the actual community itself of people yeah. who are literally putting their art and their photos and their life out there for people to see. I feel like it's it's definitely a friendlier community yeah, than some of the other yeah. ones. And I've, oh, I've enjoyed Instagram. I, I mean, it's one I go to every day and look through things yeah. and see people's stuff. And I, it's, you know, been yeah. a nice way to connect with people, especially for you, like artists like you and photographers and even to some extent musicians, but yeah. mostly, mostly the visual with photography and art. It's been, I think, a a great outlet for them. Maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but I feel like it's been a good place for them to, to share well, this, this if they year, weren't already. This year has, yeah, it, it, it has changed so much. I, I really love the way it was before. And I, I, I would have, I, I had more engagement before, uh, because now the app asks a lot from you. You have to do the stories and the read. Oh, no, what's the name of the last thing? Re no, Reels. Reels, and yeah, the that's post, new. Yeah, the Reels, the post. And if you're not doing all of it, um, then you're still losing engagement. So it's it's a lot of much harder work than it was at the beginning. Yeah. Sure. And, <laughs> you know, but but still it is a, a great platform and a great way to, to communicate with others. I'm, I'm very, very grateful for everything that it has given me because... Um, Thanks to it, I have connected uh, with others, and I have been able to have exhibits and things and sell my art. And, you know, so it's uh, I'm very very grateful. And it's a great way to get your name out there without having to necessarily spend a lot of money up front in the beginning to yeah. start a website and things like that. Right. You know, if you yes. if you can utilize yes. the platform to, you know, um, catapult yourself out there, you know, and not have to necessarily spend money on 
web hosting and things like that, you know, I say, hey, mm-hmm. go for it. Um, do yeah. you spend a lot of time every day on Instagram, you know, posting and hashtagging and all the things? What's your process <laughs> I, there? <laughs> I used to, not anymore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and because I have been focused on this online exhibit and all those things that I've been preparing right. a lot of other so I don't get to have as much time. Yeah. And I've been feeling that I need to hire somebody to take care of that because I am uh, yeah. not able to post as often as I would like to. Yeah. So that is something that I kind of like see in the near future, having somebody helping me there. Yeah. Um, because I don't want <clears throat> to, I'm sorry, I don't want to lose that. Yeah. And uh, But I used to spend two to three hours a day at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, that's how I build my following base. Mm-hmm. And um researching for the correct you know the the hashtags and yeah uh, doing you gotta keep up with the algorithms carefully yes yeah. and but and I, well, at one point i was really like on top like i know this algorithm like this is <laughs> this I'm, i have it they know? change I it too it. much i'm yeah. getting a little <laughs> it's getting a little irritating they, how much they change it they change it so so often so that often. I'm at a total loss right now. So I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't really know. Social <laughs> media, really know. social media posting, um, any platform really can be a full time job. Yeah. So you know when you're, yeah. you know you're talking about hiring somebody possibly to take that over for you. I think that's a fantastic idea because then it can actually yeah. free you up to focus on the things you need to focus on. Right. Because um, yeah. social media can be a full time job. We have we have a person here that does it full time for us. So, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you can't you cannot. It's just a, it's a lot. People think oh you're just posting something and you leave yeah, it alone no, but you can't just, you can't do that if yeah. you're running a business you have to promote it and you have to make sure that you're you know including the right information with it to so people can go to the right places to purchase the product that you're it. yeah you know yeah. selling or the, to... the service you're selling so uh, yeah. yeah that's a great that's a great thing for the future I definitely think if you can manage to do that you'll you'll find that you'll be successful more because you your time is better spent doing the work rather than yeah. the promotion. And <laughs> r- right now they um, have six hours of my day taken from me because uh, since my son is in the ESC program I I usually I'm next to him for the six hours of the, the school day I have to be close to him yes right. yes so it's it's taking a lot. Thank God I don't sleep that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Thank God, or thank, oh, you know, it's a it's a blessing or a curse, right? <laughs> no, no, it is it is a blessing. Actually, my whole family, I think we have like this mutated gene or something because we we only need like four to five hours. To sleep. Oh my God! I'm jealous. Yeah, so, me too. So only is when we are stressed <laughs> that we need more, and I like. I would say to my husband, I'm going to go to bed early. And he'll look at me like, what? Are, are you okay? <laughs> are you not feeling you well? Because okay? yeah. <laughs> I usually go to bed like at one thirty two in the morning every day and get up at 6. So Ooh, whoa. it's, uh, it's <laughs> yeah, and it's been like that forever. I I've been doing some of that here was, lately, but I'm yeah, a zombie because younger, of it. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> when I was younger, my parents took me to a neurologist because they thought I had an issue with sleeping patterns. <laughs> and oh, turns out that the... Yeah, it turns out no. There's um, there's this um, Just... curve, you know, you know that that shows like people can sleep from four to twelve hours, and that like the majority needs eight, but some people actually need the twelve, and some uh-huh. people just need the four. You know, it's, it's yeah. just less feasible. Yeah. And yeah. my siblings and I were both we're all like, the same way. So I but... wish I could get away with four hours of sleep. <laughs> that would be yeah. make my life a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. Um, as, as an artist, um, do you have like a favorite type of a style of painting that you like? Do you have a favorite color scheme that you typically work yeah. with? Uh, tell us a little oh, bit yes. about that. Um, since, well, everything depends on my emotions, but I do have some colors that I actually kind of like see. Like you gravitate toward. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a purple pink hmm. because I, I made the pink out of purple. Right. Uh, it's a particular hue of uh, light blue. It's um, it's a deep green, uh, light light deep light green. It's called as the name, and then white. Those are my four main okay. colors. Do that you make your beautiful. own? Do you make your own watercolors, or do you purchase them from? Oh, yeah. Well, no, uh, those are acrylics. I actually okay. mix. Um, yeah, I, but I do make some colors too for watercolors. I I do my own mixings. Okay. Okay. Because I know I know there are people who will make their own watercolors rather than say buy the the store bought you know either pro oh. or hobbyist kind. But you know some people 
Uh, yeah, from the pigment and pigment yeah, from and pigments. binders and all do those. Do you do yeah. that? Yeah, no. No? Uh, <laughs> no. She doesn't have time no, for no. that. <laughs> no, I, I actually, um, I go with companies that have light fast chart charts. Gotcha. So they can assure me that the life expectancy of my paintings will last for uh, right. hundred yes. years. Right. You know, so if I were to do it myself, I wouldn't be able to test that. And to me, that is important. Yes, the longevity um, of the work that you're selling, obviously. Yes. That's important. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I tend to gravitate towards the same types of colors over and over again, regardless of my mood. <laughs> so I'm like, I just think these colors are pretty, you know. Yeah. I want them to. I want to have a preference. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, great. No, it's, it's weird because those colors sometimes are not in the entire painting, but they are somewhere. Yeah, so they're always somewhere. Yeah, yeah. They're always like they're always somewhere. So it is. Um, and do you work with I, acrylics and, and watercolor in equal measure, or do you find yourself working with one or the other more? I go through stages. I went uh, for a couple of years just watercolors, and then I went back to acrylics, and I've been working with acrylics except for the class that I teach in, uh, in watercolors. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's mainly acrylics now. Yeah. I, I, I love acrylics because they have such a – they're so versatile. Yeah. Uh, you can do so many things. You can go very light and thin, um, and there's this uh, acrylic inks now. So they have available yes. this different viscosities for it. So you can have uh, one that actually looks like oil painting and uh, some other that looks oh, uh, wow. like ink or watercolor. So okay. it's uh, gold. there's this brown golden and that has available this thinner things, and, and you can just through opacity. So it, it's really versatile, and I love yeah. it. I, yeah, yeah. The one thing I did change with time, though, is that I would, at the beginning, I would do all gloss um, varnish, and now I'm on the matte yeah. varnishes. Yeah. So I guess that was from youth to maturity, because I yeah. feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, too, our, our preferences glossy. can kind of change, or like the our yeah, aesthetics, the, the, you know. The, kind of, the trends, I guess, kind of change. I mean, yeah. I, I remember trying to find, look at a painting in a... Um, in a gallery once and and I couldn't see I kept turning because I couldn't see the whole painting because the lights would glare on, off on the, the you know and glossy. I couldn't yeah and so I was like I couldn't find that sweet spot where I could actually see the whole thing because there was always this you know a glare so yeah, on, yeah so I would imagine the mat would uh, would prevent that from happening it would be nice <laughs> yeah I, I learned that you were able to see better and yeah, I guess yeah. that actually came with the need of using uh, wearing glasses. Because ah. <laughs> before, before I could do, I painted a miniature for a long time, and I did the miniatures without magnifying glasses because what I wanted is kind of like test the limits of my ability. Yeah. Um. So I I, I developed that. I mean, and I don't know if it was that that damaged my eyes or turning forty because the, the <laughs> doctor Modi said you know yeah you know the for the cord or something changed in a different way when you're older. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, it just sort of, it could be a combination of both. <laughs> yeah. so, but I, I kind of like abuse, you know, looking at tiny little things and, right. um, and, and, and glossy was not working because yeah. with the reflex, I couldn't see the thing uh -huh. that I was doing. And uh, Matt gave me the possibility of seeing all the colors at once. And, and it was just a, and it was not uh, a, like a natural transition. It was a friend of mine um, who's a, a a painter too, mm. an artist, and and he told me like I prefer everything with Matt, and and I, up until this point I d have not even tried it, gotcha. and when I did, I was like, oh, this is a life changer. Yeah, <laughs> this is what I was looking for, and I didn't know. <laughs> so much better. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned that you have miniatures. So what are the? You have these little bitty tiny paintings that you do, which I think that's really what caught my attention. Them, I was like, my goodness, she tiny. She painted on this teeny tiny little like business card size <laughs> canvas. Um, what what sizes do you go up to? Well, you you said you did murals in high school. So what is your sweet spot when it comes to <clears throat> doing paintings for work? Is it just all over the place depending on your mood that day, or or do you stay within a regular yeah, size? I'm, no, it's um. I would say 30 by 40 inches is something I okay. really love painting. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, it's really good for homes that size because yeah. Yeah. visually it's, size. it's, it's uh, calling your attention, but it's not as massive that you would need a, a, a great wall, wall to yeah. have right. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, um, but I can go as big as anything. I have yeah. painted murals and, and uh, I love it. <laughs> and I mean, from these teeny I, I tiny love, little miniatures yeah. to murals, I mean, yeah, and anything my, in between. Yeah. I have my tiniest miniature fits the tip of my finger. Oh. Yeah. What? Yes. 
You should go on yeah. her account Lisa and look. Just she has... that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's this my tiny 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 little painting. My oh my miniature. gosh. Yeah, y'all should uh, all go check yeah. those out because they're really, they were really cool. I was like, how did she <clears throat> do that? that? How, what, did your yeah. paintbrush just have like one hair? <laughs> well, I actually did my own, <laughs> yeah, my own brushes. I, I would, I was gonna I say. Put, you know, the, 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 the smallest I could find is a four zeros. Um, so I would take away some bristles out of the brush. Oh my brush gosh. To get it the smaller. And then I had to, because. Uh, when when painting with acrylics, acrylics dry really fast. Right. So I had to develop techniques of of it lasting longer on the thin little, you know, brush that I was using <laughs> for me to do a, a, like a straight line. Because otherwise, I would do like a dot, and then I didn't. I ran out of. And paint. then it was gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it was dry already on the on the paintbrush. So I had to do uh, you know some adaptation from that too. And 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 those challenges are to me very rewarding. I love challenging yeah. myself on different it's like, things. It's like, it's like a, a puzzle. Yeah, I was about to say the, the same thing. Yeah. It's like a puzzle you have to yeah. So cool. yeah, and test and kind of a science experiment at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's fun to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is. That's neat. Yeah. It's like a it's like a play it's like playtime. Uh-huh. Um so Kara, <laughs> what what is the what does the future hold for you and your business? What what do you see happening here in the you know, recent, the, the very recent, or uh, not recent, but the upcoming future, recent months coming I, up, and then anything in the long term, what, what do you think is going to happen? Well, for the long term, I want to continue uh, participating on international uh, fairs all, all over the place. That's, okay. Uh, that, that's what I love. Um, on a personal, like, mo- more about my company, I want to develop a grant for other artists. Wow. Um, that is in nice. the schedule for next year. Yes. Um, because one of the hardest things, um, and I have a good personality, so to me it was not as hard as it is to other people, but meeting and, and getting your foot into the, the and networking, world. networking, yeah. And networking is, is difficult, and uh, prom- promoting where to promote and all those things. So I want to create a, a, a grant that would grant people some money to allocate for um, marketing and also give some guidance on how to do things and how to approach galleries yeah. and how to present uh, your work on a contest, um, and you know, l- like a a two part grant. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I want to launch that uh, for next year. That's I'm, fantastic. I'm, I'm working on on that. Yeah. Because a lot of people want to maybe do that as their life goal, but they, they you know, like you, want they were an engineer, or they were an accountant, or they're in business in some way, and in the security, the financial security, <clears throat> or the unknown right. of starting a business where you create art is is kind of i'm sure it's scary it's yeah intimidating i would yeah. imagine yeah so that's fantastic yeah. you'll have to yeah, I, you'll have to come back I, on when that's a reality and yeah, talk about that that'll be a, a lot of help for for some people yeah and, and um it's, it's uh i always say like probably would have not made the jump if it wasn't because i had like a, a step in between like yeah. i i left engineering completely without thinking of going to any other profession yeah. You know? right. So it's not that I, I went from engineering to art directly. I, I don't know. That would have been very, very scary, too. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's yes. a lot of talented people that, you know, are lost there. And maybe we could, as humanity, could, you know, have another um, great Picasso or somebody. And it's yeah. right now that at an stuck. office. You and, you could yeah. be, and you could be part of that. That would be amazing. There you go. Um, well, tell everybody where they can find you uh, on the Internet. Well, my Instagram is apia underscore art, and that's where I mainly gravitate towards. My um, website is uh, apiaart.com. So apia is A-P-I-A. Okay. And then art. Uh, dot com and uh, basically those are the two places i'm exhibiting at via firing right now which is a california platform okay um so you can find my work there too awesome, awesome. and i guess so. they can just go to your website and email you if they want to commission something from you correct yes yes i take in commissions uh i also have some works that are available um that people can um ask about them uh, from some posting or Sometimes people tell me what they want, and I have things that I have never posted that would be more suitable to what they're looking for. Okay. And I, what I do is I make uh, special selections for potential uh, collectors, okay. and I oh, give them, nice. you know, some, yeah, I give them some options depending on a space or things that they they tell me that they, they want to, they All are right. for, and um, and then I make a selection of what I have especially for for that. So 
Um, awesome. That's another another way to work. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you so much, Carol, for being on today and talking with us about your art. It's uh, great to get to meet you. You are a delightful human, and I'm so <laughs> glad that we got to have this conversation today. And thank you for overcoming your fear of having your voice recorded for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm, it was such a pleasure to spend this time with all yeah. of you. So thank yeah, you. Fun. yeah, fantastic. Well, you have a great day out there in Florida, uh, guys. This is going to wrap thank us you. up for today. Um, thanks for listening you should uh tell us your story uh send us a send us an email on our website at painpoints.com if you want to be a guest on our podcast you can visit us on all of our social media at pain points and uh if you're listening uh you should check us out on uh, apple podcasts spotify and youtube leave us some reviews some comments tell us what you want to hear next who you who we should be interviewing um yeah and you should subscribe and follow so that you don't miss an episode all right guys thanks everybody for being here and talking today and uh i hope everybody goes out and has a great great week thank you so much bye thank you bye